Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Constructing the Clubhouse, the world's number one premier podcast about running a comedy club. That's it. Boom. Yep. The introduction has changed. <laughs> I've heard complaints uh, from, let's just be fair, from absolute nincompoops. However, you know, being a man of the people, I'm open to change. Uh, <laughs> I, I suggested that we change the, the intro to the that podcast. That was bullshit! At the start of our last podcast, um, and it ruined and the entire podcast. What? Well, we didn't release it. We well, this is our second attempt. The intro to, was the the ruin ruination. Uh, apparently, it, it, it well, I think it threw us off from the start a little bit. Um, there was no flow. Yeah, it was a really bad podcast last week. Or I almost wanted to release to it to like I, I wanted to almost release it and then do a disclaimer at the start, being like, "Look, uh, just so everyone knows, we know that this is bad." <laughs> We wanted to release it for the sake of completeness, but uh, new policy, we're only releasing stuff that's good, or at least we think is good. That's right. We can, uh, let's open it up to all of our amazing listeners. If you have a suggestion for a new tagline for constructing the clubhouse, I'm all ears. Personally, I think starting the comedy club during a pandemic in the middle of Barcelona is the one and only way to open this show, but Uh, let us know what you think. I think we've moved on. Uh, from the COVID pandemic. People are still dying, John. (laughs) Get your... Oh, God. You sound like Fauci. Uh, He's got a Brooklyn accent. People are dying. It's not bad. That's just what I imagine he sounds like. Not bad. Um, Anyway, welcome, everybody. Yeah. Hey, big shout out to our latest listener, Miss Graciela. Oh, sweet. We got another one. Yeah. So she, she texted me saying she was really excited to hear the roast uh episode and then she loved the introduction on that show because i said nice things about james and tamer and then tore you apart apparently yeah that's a uh, classic matt uh, on this podcast uh, Just... actually another new listener as well bart messaged me before saying yeah. he was listening to the roast episode as well and having a good time and then he was listening to the marcus ep- episode and and he was laughing about how we easily get sidetracked by whatever's <laughs> whatever's going on uh, which is nice awesome. i think that means we have a good flow right yeah, that we're able absolutely. to ease into whatever so shout out to thing. bartman do we call him funny bart or unfunny bart oh my god we're gonna have we're gonna have to invite bart kumar back and have a bart off oh this is not Bart. oh okay i gotcha yeah yeah who's the bartman yeah who's the true bartman yeah, I hated I hated the unfunny John nickname I earned myself over over the weekend. It was a uh, we made this video to promote John Spillane uh, doing the the spotlight show, which I thought of the idea for the video, and everyone yeah, loved the video. And as part of this video, we suggested that he was funny John, and I have never seen a nickname <laughs> take off so easily. <laughs> yep. Uh, and it coincided with the roast as well, uh, which didn't go very well for either of us, but especially for me. Allegedly. Um, I think our roast was fine. I'm uh, excited for the video. So on today's today's episode, we got to talk about the roast. Uh, we can mention Spotlight being fantastic. Uh, yeah. Because we don't make bad shows here at the Comedy Clubhouse. Hell no. Uh, what else is on the itinerary for today? Uh, I've got some business advice for people. Mm-hmm. I think... I think we've we've learned a lot by just bumping off of walls. Uh, yep. So I think we have a clubhouse schoolhouse section on YouTube now. I think we could have like a clubhouse business advice section. Come join the JBMA program. Yeah. J A M A. John Ellis Masters of whatever. John, and, is, we need we need a let's have a name for the segment and a little ta- a little song for you. Hell yeah. John's business corner. Um and Monday night we should talk about as well. Oh yeah, Monday night was fucking insane this week. Who would have thought? Funky chunky. Big shout out to Dimitri. Uh yeah. All right, so let's go over the the roast again. We we covered it uh pretty good on the podcast that shall not be aired. However, um if you were not attending the roast, you missed out on a epic time. You're a loser and. Shame on you. Yeah, according to many, the best show we've ever done, which uh, always... Hurts. That hurts. <laughs> always that hurts. hurts when it's not one that we had any direct hand in, yeah. in, in making or doing, and, and our part of was apparently the worst part of that show. Um, but yeah, so, it went amazing. It was good. It was, it was very yeah, crowded. It was packed show. My friend Wendy came, and I had no idea she was in the audience. Oh, I didn't see her at all. I didn't either. And uh, But she said it was great. She said we did a good job. Cool, that's good. Yeah. 
She said the energy was incredible. Um, so big shout out to James mm -hmm. and Phil who organized that gifty who ran the tech and the one and a half comedians that were judges on that panel, <laughs> Tamar Catan, Kyla Cobbler and John Spillan. So if you weren't at the, at the roast folks, uh, John and I had the, the final battle of the night. Um, John gave a valiant effort where he tried to string together a number of puns to take me down. I tried to be too clever. I, I, I took Tamar's advice that it was a joke writing competition, and I thought, well, I'll weave together a beautiful little theme throughout all of my jokes. And I think I was kind of too busy trying to remember what they were and and the exact thing for every single one of them that none of them landed. Yeah. Um, and well, and it, it's too bad. It, it all relied on some puns, which and it, yeah, sure. Maybe it's not the highest form of comedy. Yeah, yeah. When the when the punchline to all of them is is, is a pun pun, it wasn't really uh, ideal. Um, but that was on purpose. I just I because I also took the advice that it's not about being mean. It's not about trying to hurt the person as much as possible. And I just had this fun he, little silly yes. thing, and I was like, Matt will love it. And the audience and I did. will love it. And it was, yeah, and it was they just didn't. Matt. It was just, it was a nice soft massage to Matt's ego. Um, uh, yeah. And it was very nice. I appreciate it, Johnny Boy. I, and I noticed that, like, you really didn't go after any of the soft spots. Uh, no, no shame on my weed addiction. Uh, really, no shots. Um, I, I was expecting a shot about my marriage. Yeah, but well, then we like about... talked about it on the podcast. I was like, yeah. eh, I don't know. And then maybe... my story was funnier than any joke you wrote. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I could have just told the story. It would have been a long roast joke. And then, but everybody would have laughed at me. Yeah, and I think I probably could have got bigger laughs if I'd uh, talked about you wanting to sleep with homeless women, yeah. uh, or something like that. Shout out to Noelia. There was one that I uh, I almost didn't put into my actual roast in the end but was the one that like got the most laughs so it was the one about you being a great host and how you're a host for for i don't know malaria and all of this kind <laughs> of thing. And people laughed a lot and i was like i, I thought that was shit yeah uh, basically but not as shit as all the other ones that i had so that was a, a thing i had uh two disappointments one was, so I, I had this joke about uh, running a club with you is like having a kid on my lap pretending to drive, right? And be like, oh yeah, Johnny, you're, you're running, in the, you're steering the club. Uh, and like, it's exactly like that, except John always tries to steer to the right. I love that line. It got zero laughs. Yeah. Got right. absolutely zero laughs. The, the Qatari one that I feel, followed it up with uh, did really well, which is uh, John's favorite part of the World Cup was the Qatari yeah, labor the, policies. The, the slave labor. And, and um, the, the last one, one about Bart, right? Was... And so that's my second disappointment of the night. Bart was not at the show. And, uh, and actually, this got me dinged with Tamar for being um, too inside baseball. But I said, uh, you know, John, John only hired Bart because he didn't think we would ever have to pay him. Yeah, that was, that was great. That made me laugh. Uh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. It, I told uh, Bart and Javi that whatever the next night. Oh, I guess it would have been that Friday night. I got a really nice laugh out of them. Good. Yeah. But Bart, you should have been at the goddamn show. Yeah, he missed out. Well, he's hearing all about it now. So he's <laughs> lucky. Luckily, he's got a full recap. Yeah. So, um, and they've got another roast battle coming up this Thursday, right? Tomorrow night? Yeah. I mean, in, or uh, tonight, four days tonight. ago well, by the time anyone's listening to this. But. Uh, you hear that, folks? We are far ahead in the future with our podcast we, we are actually we released three episodes this this week yeah three episodes four videos on youtube doing pretty well three episodes four ep <laughs> three episodes four videos and two listeners uh yeah for every minute we record we get about 20 seconds of listening time from other people i'll take it um that's fine uh i gotta say did not love like being roasted by you didn't hurt very much. There was a couple Good. of things where I was like, oh, I don't love that. I don't yeah. like the whole uh, 
is he retarded, is he not conversation. Yeah. I know I've sort of brought that on myself <laughs> a little bit, but I don't love the... I, I feel Unrelated, like I... <laughs> unrelatedly, I saw a tweet uh, about a guy who thinks he cured his own autism, and I thought of you, John. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like because I brought it on myself right when I started speculating yeah. as to that exact fact on stage, but I did it in a vulnerable, honest way, and now it's been uh, twisted ah. around to genuine speculation from everyone all the time. Oh no. Um and yeah, I don't. It's not fun uh, for me in particular, but not nearly as not fun as it is to be roasted based on how bad your roasts are. <laughs> the post-roast roast? Yeah. The, 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 just imagine being in a room of three judges who are some of the people that you admire most at yeah. the thing that you're trying hardest in your life to do. Uh, and then a whole group of about 70 people that are your regular customers that you like, that you see all the time. Uh, and then the three people that you admire most at the thing that you're trying to do most proceed to eloquently and specifically tell you how terrible you are at the thing that you've decided to dedicate your life to, yeah. uh, to which all of your friends and the people that you know <laughs> very well start to jeer enthusiastically <laughs> over uh so that was a <laughs> it's like a terrible episode of this is your life for you know we've got everybody that knows you john and they all think you're unfunny it it, it could have been a dream it could have been one of those like dreams yeah. where you wake up naked right yep. um wild <laughs> and i'm gonna say it was uh terrible to see everybody get into the roast spirit as oh, well right. it wasn't it wasn't like it was just me and you on stage insulting each other everyone afterwards was very very happy to um and have their, have their crack, yep. uh, and then that on top of the video that we made uh, for with with John and me being nicknamed Unfunny John all weekend was uh, tough, yeah. tough so, to get through. So the roast happened uh, Thursday. We filmed that Tuesday. The roast happened Thursday, and then Friday and Saturday. This whole ad is out every in every place possible, saying, "Oh, look, it's Unfunny John." Yeah. No, well, no, you're Unfunny John. It's funny. It's funny how your ego like tries to protect you though, right? Cuz yeah. cuz I like almost the second I got off stage, I was sitting there going like, yeah, man, none of my jokes hurt. What? What, <laughs> What's wrong with this audience? Yeah, what are the chances that 70 people would all be morons? <laughs> <laughs> that they wouldn't understand what I was doing, the sophistication <laughs> with which I write jokes and the judges as well, you know. So, when you have to slow it down to explain Jeff Blazos uh, anyway, comedy is the sorry, John. Uh, the great ego equalizer. Every every oh, single man. time I think I'm doing something good, or I think I'm getting ahead, or I think same with you know this place. We have a month where we're up a thousand euros, and we're on this massive fucking buzz, and then the next month we lose two thousand euros. It's um, it's like the opposite of boxing. One step forward, and four steps back. Oh, I. I th- feel like you flail in a direction and then get knocked on your ass it seems like exactly like boxing <laughs> it's maybe a little bit like exactly that. when like when i box um anyway i'm over it now i'm over it Good, I will, great i will say after my experience i was especially fragile uh last week after my uh experience that i had <laughs> so i was just i was just like touchy 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 i yeah i started like properly welling up because i saw a video on instagram of this tennis player that accidentally hit a tennis ball into a ball girl's head. Yeah. And then he, like, stopped the game and, like, rushed on over it and, like, checked on the <laughs> on the ball girl. And it was just... And she was, like, hurt and upset, but she was so happy that her hero was, like, checking in on her and... And that got to Johnny Boy. Yeah, that pushed me over the edge, right? So that's oh, the level of fragility that I was approaching the week with. Um, but yeah, by about Monday, I'd, I'd forgotten all about it and I thought I was funny again. So that was... I, I think I saw you for dinner Sunday night and you seemed pretty much fixed by then, <laughs> which was good. Good. Pretty much fixed. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, easy come, easy go. Uh, well, good. Get your me. shit together, John. Cause, uh, this weekend we've got some shows coming up in Nantes at the Micro Comedy Club. Really looking forward to them. Really looking forward to being away. Really looking forward to... Can... Yeah. I don't know if there's much I can do. Okay. No worries. Um, telling any jokes I want at all. Oh my God. That no one has heard of whatsoever. Oh, I have a, a confession to make, John. You've heard them? No. No, no. Uh, so the roast was Thursday and so at Friday at the sold out comedy bomb shelter. Complete sellout. Fucking packed. 
motherfucking house. Uh, I recycled the roast jokes. Oh, you did? Yeah. <laughs> I saw some people that I knew uh, that have, that uh, uh, come to the the bomb shelter every every couple of weeks. Christina, you remember her? Austrian girl? Uh, probably. Yeah. Uh, she thinks that you hate her, by the way. Yeah. Um, it's it's kind of too bad. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I don't. I really don't. There's very, very few people in yeah. my life that I, that I, I hate at all. I just often I, I'm distracted or I don't know. I'm irritable. I yeah. guess. I tried to explain to her that you were probably just like working and not in a sociable mood. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry if you think that, Christina. I, I, I don't hate you at all. I, yeah. No. Unless you're the Christina I'm thinking of. <laughs> um, no, just totally kidding. And it's a, it's a shame that that's, uh, that's the all jokes, all Some jokes. John sometimes. hates the Jews. Uh, I'm just also not true. I'm just impatient and get lost in my own world. And I can't easily be drawn into uh, conversation when I am lost in my own world. So I think sometimes no. people like try and get me to have conversation. And I'm just like, no, no, I'm, I'm doing this or I've, I've I'm thinking of something else or, or whatever. His head was up his own ass so far he couldn't hear you, Christina. I'm busy brainstorming roast jokes, Christina. Um, this shit doesn't write itself. No. <laughs> yeah, duh. And commercials. God, I'm excited for these commercials we're filming. Yeah, yesterday... I don't think it's on the schedule, but like, for talking about today, but like, boy. Yeah, yesterday we had a really fun... Um, filming day we did a few different things we've seen the videos just before recording now and and it's cool they're not the best but we're on track right yeah. we're, we're, we're getting better and we have a plan if you guys uh, if anybody listening do us a favor and let us know what you think about those commercials actually because i think i, I can't tell if i just like seeing my own face in in videos or if we're on to something because Ah, boy. Like, I really liked the one with Spallan and I. It was just, like, this, like, offhand moment where I was making fun of the fact... Somebody said menagerie. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was like, hey, John, I had a menagerie with your, your mother. I enjoyed that one. But making these commercials is the most fun thing in the world, and I would love it if other people like them enough that we can keep doing it. Yeah. Right? We had Andy Casper in the house yesterday to, to make some commercials for his Spotlight show this Saturday. Saturday, January twenty eighth. It's too late. This is, it's, it was. It's. It's. There's another spotlight on the weekend with a guy called Nico Yearwood. If, oh. if you're listening to this, he's. Right. I actually am a fan of his. I've, I've followed him on um, social media for a while. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, and... grab your ticket now. Spotlight, by the way, is also selling out. So you want to get your tickets ahead of time for these shows. Anyway, it's just the most fun thing to be sit there with a, another comedian and just riff and try to make them laugh while not breaking. Like just, so we're trying to describe ways that Andy was nice and I'm an asshole. And so it's just, yeah, that was great. I was, I was just so like much fun. giggling in the background. In yeah. fact, one of the, uh, on the other one we did about how, how if you're the kind of person that leaves reviews <laughs> for places, then don't come to the clubhouse on that. You can clearly hear me just cracking up in the background because yeah. of something you did. So yeah, I was, um, I was giggling. Yeah. Shout out to them for, uh. Cutting those up. Yep. And if anybody has ideas for these kind of commercials, give us a shout, man. I'm I'm so stoked for them. I will film anything anybody proposes. Mm -hmm. I like that it's it's. I know it won't be that simple once we dive into it, but for me at the moment, it seems so clear that you just look at how well every video does in terms of likes and comments and views, and then you. Drop the bottom 10% of videos, never make them again. D drop the bottom 20% of videos, never make them again. Experiment with another 10%. And then the top 10% of videos, you just make more that are like them, but slightly different. Yep. And then you keep doing that every month <laughs> over the period of a year. And everything that you're doing is three times as good as it was at the start of the year. I don't know yes. if that's maths or not, but <laughs> that's in my head, that's how it works, right? That's the John Ellis business plan. That's a it sounds, I mean, it sounds like a great plan and it's like, it's fuck tons of fun. It's so much fun. It's so much fun. Yeah. I really, I really love thinking of sketch ideas and some of them are very, very bad, but, um, to get back to this trip, uh, up to France, uh -huh. I'm, I'm stoked cause it's going to be you and I, and we just have like two shows on Friday night. Right. Yeah. And that's it. We can get a lot of, a lot of writing done, yeah. I think. And I'll be away from, uh, my girlfriend, Mary Jane. For the first time in ages. Oh, yeah. That's going to be a, a cleanse. Yeah. And I have a fucking healthy, stupid son of a bitch to compare myself with. So 
I'll be like motivated to not be a dirtbag. I still eat a lot of McDonald's. I haven't cut down on the McDonald's at all. I thought maybe I would not feel I wish, like it once I wish I'm it would smoking, show. But I wish uh, it would show, John. You eat a lot of McDonald's. Yeah, I, I burn it off at the gym though, you know. <laughs> no, I don't know. I've been to a gym in two months. <sighs> Um, this episode cool. is brought to you by Weight Watchers. Weight Watchers. Lose weight the right way with Weight Watchers today. I really am looking forward to the idea of doing anti-commercials as well. Oh my like, God, it, I do think that's a great idea. Yeah, just specifically targeting specific companies that don't sponsor the clubhouse. And you, telling when, everyone, was, you, that, that's, uh, when did you first come up with that? That was like last year or something? Was that at Old Limericks? Was that for yeah, Dorotea? Yeah, this was Old Limericks. And this was, a, it was when we were doing fake sponsors for this podcast. So ah, one right. of the fake sponsors was like, this podcast is not sponsored by Burger King. Burger King, the most disgusting fast food chain in the world if you want to find a thumb in your burger eat burger king that kind of thing yep you know i had burger king once and i found four different types of chlamydia in it <laughs> yeah the uh, nuggets were meat free because it was <laughs> simply like gonorrhea cultures burger king Give us money or, <laughs> or we yeah, won't yeah. stop. Yeah, look, I would love to not talk about how disgusting Burger King is, but until they sponsor us, I don't really see, like, feel like we have much of a choice, you know? Um, That's right. There's, there's only so much time in the world, and, and it sucks that I have to dedicate so much of it towards talking about how shit Burger King is. Look, if it didn't make me both infertile, impotent, and, uh, and a rapist, I wouldn't have to talk about Burger King. But here we are. Uh, also, we'll stop for as little as 10 euros a week. I think that might be how, how we get our first sponsor. <laughs> we should start... Yeah. Maybe we could get sponsored by other comedy shows in Barcelona. <laughs> <laughs> Your ain't is comedy. Sponsor us or else. We need a few more listeners on this first. Him. Uh, and it's obviously not bad for them if we start like spamming our Instagram with stuff about uh, Uranus comedy or whatever. No. Uh, what shows do you want to emphasize next? So we're selling out Mop Shelter, selling out, almost selling out Spotlight. Uh, we just sold out Absolute Packed House for the Funky Chunky Mike. Yeah, the guy First time. with the most friends in the entire Good world. Good Christ. Dimitri something. I <laughs> know, and we we bothered to learn his name. Um, yeah, he's a fucking legend. He he. So he sold sixty tickets like in advance before the show had even started, and then probably another twenty people, yep. thirty people, twenty five people, let's say, walk in wanting to buy tickets at the door, and we're just selling tickets at the door because yeah. we're like whatever, because a lot of people were late, right? And oh, then when man. he was on stage, they told him like nine o'clock he was going to be on stage. So then a whole bunch more people come in at nine o'clock to be like, yeah, I bought a ticket. I'm here to see Dimitri. And we were like, look, I don't know if you're going to find a seat because we yeah. sold uh, like all the tickets. It's absolutely full. Yeah. Uh, so they were just. That one girl got really snotty. Yeah. And I wasn't even saying you couldn't go in. I was saying like, look, it's full. Like, go have a look. Uh, but <laughs> and she's like, but I bought a ticket. And we're like, yeah, you're also an hour late. But he said he was going to perform at nine. But the show starts at eight. Yeah. And like you kind of so... need to be there at eight to get mm -hmm. your. Weird Junior attitude seat. that you like, that we just hold the all the seats for one person. Like, imagine if everyone bought tickets and planned to come for his stage time only. So we've got oh, a completely yeah. empty room that we're holding. And then <laughs> 70 people rush down, grab a seat, and then leave Watch after a seven minutes or yep. whatever. So, no, we will absolutely keep selling tickets after the show has started if there are any empty seats. Uh, and that's the policy. Yeah. Uh, fun though, fun and it really smoothly ran as well. Oh my god, yeah, that night went very smooth. I suppose, well, no, I was gonna say, yeah, it went really smooth. They must not have drank that much, but we did. We did pretty well at the till. We did what was about five hundred. Yeah, on yeah. a Monday. On a Monday. Remember when that was a good Saturday? Yeah, it still is kind yeah, of. I mean, that was this Saturday as well. I think. Yeah. I think maybe Monday beat Saturday this week. No, we have ten shows on Saturday. Yeah, Can't it was be. quiet, though. It was oh. quiet. I mean, it was busy at midday, but then it just emptied after the spotlight immediately. The spotlight was hard to get people in for. Weird audience. Mm. Oh, yeah. Cool audience, if any of them are listening, but just weird. Yeah. John hosted his first spotlight show. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. I was worried that I was rusty, and I was rusty, and I had some self-esteem issues <laughs> that weekend. We should have thrown you on bomb shelter, maybe. No, but you, sh- you know, you you needed the night off. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's. I mean, it's fine. Partly, honestly, partly it's that I'm just not that excited about any of my old jokes anymore. And oh yeah. So then I like, I'm like faking enthusiasm, and I think they can sense it. Um, that's why I want to film when we go to Nantes because I'm going to do a lot of them, and it will be easier to get the enthusiasm because it'll yeah. be it'll be fresh. You know, I can tell like the Make a Wish joke or whatever, and and people will dig and it. You just have to be better than Nantes' best performer in English. Yeah, and considering they've never had an English comedy show before, I think I might be on to something. <laughs> uh, we found your your niche. You went to was it Malta, Madagascar? First yeah. English show ever there. <laughs> first English show ever in Nantes. My 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 niche is setting a low bar for anyone to come in and, and do better for for being the the best English comedy show at a place that's never had an English comedy show before. As soon as Elon gets that rocket ready, John's going to do the first set on Mars. Hell yeah. And the Martians will be like, I don't think this is very funny. It's not very relatable. It's a lot of Earth-based humor. What's with the puns? Um, I like them. What else? Uh, do we have anything else to cover tonight? Yeah, just just my business advice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to John's Business Hour, the one place for all your business advice needs. Yeah. Starring John Ellis couple of choice pieces of advice for anyone looking to start a business. By the way, if anyone is starting a comedy club, I know it's quite a niche thing to do, but if anyone is starting a comedy club, I do think that this podcast is probably the best single free resource available. Has to be. To anyone that is doing specifically yeah. exactly what we're doing. Because uh, if right? anybody knew more than us, they would charge money. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a lot of like listening and then being like whoop i would not do that um but a couple of pieces of advice first piece of advice is do it yourself uh before you hire somebody else to do it Mm. um i think this is something that took us that took me a while to learn because i just am not inclined to want to do it myself my natural tendency towards laziness wants somebody else to do it and i don't think of myself as an expert in anything I don't think of you an expert at... That's great. Thanks, man. Um, (laughs) You got to make the joke. Moving on. If you throw the softball out there, I'm going to have to swing at it. Sorry, bud. Uh, But you can, like anything it is these days, you can become not an expert, but you can become fairly good at within like two or three months, right? You can. Most You can. I'm not saying that you have to do... No, no, no. Uh, What I'm trying to gently say is that you can, John, but I don't think most people can. Yeah, maybe. Um... Not so retarded after all. No. Uh, so I find this in, this interesting for the two reasons, and I'll see if I can remember the second. The first one, though, is that I've always, you know, as we become businessmen, I was always like, back in the days when I was a hippie, I, I was always mad at CEO, CEOs making 300 times uh, the, the lower guy. And I was like, why does that guy get all that money? And now that I'm running a business, I realize that the guy at the top is actually the guy that knows how to do and can do every single job underneath. Yeah. And that's why they're, and they understand how they all interact. And if he had to, you know, he could get it done. Like, I, th- I think a CEO of Ford Mortar Company could learn how to work a, a factory mm-hmm. line. Totally. And you can fill in any gap you need. Like, yeah. like, so we bartended ourselves for six months when we first opened. If something goes wrong uh, with, with whoever, whoever's working the bar, we just we can do it. We just have to work really hard, which we yeah. don't want to do, but we can do, and we would do right. Um, and the other thing that uh, I wanted to ask about it's it's actually a question, I guess, not a realization, but the so you, your advice is to start do it do it first yourself, right? Yeah, and then maybe hire somebody. But yeah, how do you balance your time? Excuse me, I'm like belching up coffee uh, but like so i mean you know in our experience my what i i fear for you is that you're going to end up taking too many things on and you're because you can do everything individually but you can't do it all at once you know yeah so you could do any one of the six jobs that we have here at the clubhouse but you can't do all six at the same time right um right <laughs> no right I absolutely can't and and that is a, a a thing to be concerned about one thing i'll say is 
oh my god, do I have a lot of time. You have no idea how much extra time exists when you don't smoke weed and you don't drink alcohol. It is fucking crazy. <laughs> how much, like, I'd, like, spring awake in the morning at, like, 8 o'clock and I'm like, okay, going to the gym, no, I'll just do some work before the gym, and then... I don't know, I've, like, I've done more shit by, like, 2 o'clock than I would do on a, on a regular day. I do more yeah. work on a fucking Sunday these days than I would ever do on a Thursday before. Uh, and I wake up on the weekend and I'm not, like, hung over to shit. <laughs> uh, so that's the one thing, is that I do just have a lot of time these days. Uh, and nothing really else to do with my time. Um, and... I I think at least doing stuff yourself for a while until you learn what it is. The idea would be f- with a, most of these things to learn how to do it and then at least you can recognize when somebody else is doing it well or when they're not or you yeah. develop your own system and you say, great, it doesn't matter who the person is at that stage. You just say, look, sit here, do this, <laughs> do this. And it it takes me two hours a week to do this. So it should take you three hours let's say or you know whatever um so the idea is for sure to foist off um work to other people eventually i think the other piece of business advice that i didn't have here but it's to do to get less people to do more stuff to basically have (laughs) yeah have as few people as possible and to give them if they're trustworthy and reliable give them as, as many hours and as many different tasks as, as they can because there's a huge advantage at least with what we're doing to just being a general part of the the ecosystem to kind of yeah we're looking for those people that jump in and help out uh-huh. right I, I think that's what you're talking about somebody that's like oh well uh if we're gonna name names Sure. You know, like Noah has jumped in and he, he helps in so many different places, you know, yeah. it's, uh, and he sees points of synergy. So for his show, he was focused on his show and he developed a ticketing practice and, a and a, uh, like a survey for people, for the ticket taker to ask people who are coming in, how did you hear about the show? And like, and then he volunteered that for, to, to do a clubhouse wide. It, yeah. That's the kind of thing that. Yeah. I and when you when we're talking like business and stuff what I find interesting though cuz if you're not a if you're not in this business world, right? And you're not one of these dorks that go to all these fucking seminars and shit like that. You hear you hear about people talking about productivity and 10x engineers and you know all this shit all these stupid terms and how to be a leader. And you don't know what that stuff means in practice until and now now like I see it. There are certain people that just get 10 times more things done than everybody else. Yeah. They're just efficient. They don't like dawdle. They don't, I don't know, like they're not miserable debating whether or not uh, their ex-wife's video is (laughs) embarrassing. Um, Marcus seems like that to me. Yeah, for sure. Um, And they, you know, and those people are just absolutely so valuable. And that's why I was saying when, when like you can learn how to do just about anything, but it not just not everybody's cut out for for every type of job. Yeah, and yeah, I, think. I think this is this is how you become like a conservative, right? This these are the baby steps, <laughs> and then oh, the people that aren't making jobs should go to hell and fucking. I'm dragging you there slowly, <laughs> dude. Actually, all right, I, this is completely off constructing clubhouse topics, but I've been watching MMA fights lately. I think it, I think it's happening. Like I think I'm I'm. Going into the vortex. Yeah. yeah. Next thing you know, I'll be voting for, I don't know, some douchebag. and it, It'll get you. People will start calling you a Nazi that you thought loved you. And then you'll be like, oh, well, actually, these people don't call me a Nazi. And they seem to work hard. And, and next they... thing you know, you have a gigantic podcast. Sign me the fuck up. <laughs> Let's go. Um, anyway. So that's a third piece, third piece anyway. of uh, business advice. Yeah, sorry, I pulled you off topic. Getting there. back on track is uh, do it right the first time. Don't do it wrong. Stop doing it wrong because if you do it <laughs> wrong, if you do it wrong, it'll probably just stay wrong for a while and it'll be really hard to then fix and make it right again afterwards. I've been having big regrets uh, this week that we didn't just use Eventbrite in the first place right from the start. If we When we started... Limerick, if we just started using Eventbrite, we would have 700 followers on Eventbrite automatically. People that buy tickets there 
all the time. Eventbrite's sending them emails saying, look, this is a show that's coming up. Check it's this fucking out. fucking annoying. You're like at the top of every single discovery thing for events in Barcelona on Eventbrite. You get half of all of the views on your events come from Eventbrite. If we'd just done that in the first place, we didn't do that. We did a tritium and then we went with Allegrify for a while. And now only just have we switched to Eventbrite and we have all the data there. We have the payouts there. We have followers there and it's building up and it's getting so much easier uh, to manage that side of things. Uh, so I think we should have committed to Eventbrite and we very recently paid 500 euros to get a new website designed uh and i had designed the website myself the the one we were using at the time on. following john's business rule number one <laughs> okay these admittedly these <laughs> no they don't contradict okay because because do it yourself is a, is a good rule yeah for sure but it came to the stage where we needed to pay somebody else to do the website and because i'd done the shitty version what was of rule the number website, two uh rule number two I can't remember. Just rewind right. if you're listening. I, I just want to see. I, I think all three rules are going to be in, in effect in this one story. So John made John John did it himself. He accomplished rule number one, and then he decided, "All right, time to bring it." Now I know how this works. Uh, time to bring in somebody to add some polish and do it do it right. Right, and we had a, a fantastic web designer called Lauren, who's been amazing. And she was like, "Look, do you want to stick with Wix or do you want to change to WordPress?" And she was kind of like, "I prefer WordPress, and it's better for this, and it's better for this." But we can totally do Wix if you want to do Wix. We can stick with Wix. And uh, stubbornly in my head, I was like, "I want to stick with Wix because." I started using Wix when I made the website myself and I yeah. just like, I thought it would be easier. And it was good enough then. And Tradium was good enough. Yep, exactly. And now it's only two months later and I'm realizing that search engine optimization is a huge part of what we're doing. Again, this is a, the fourth piece of business advice. <laughs> Do it now. If you're like thinking about doing something, do it now. Don't wait till later and it's... it's... <laughs> Like, I, I just wish that when I was first doing comedy shows at La Dorotea six years ago, when we were at Craft, and I knew I was going to be doing comedy, that I'd gone and bought uh, some domain name, Comedy Club Barcelona. Stand Up yeah. Barcelona is a fantastic domain name. Just had some rudimentary website there that was doing that. Didn't do that. Uh, our website's not set up for SEO, search engine optimization, because it's on Wix. We've only just paid to have it made. And I've just decided we're going to now pay.